need a return ticket where you're going. This is a one-way journey. Straight down! show that flushes away those stubborn toilet stains and leaves your bowl smelling clean and full of fun, even under the rim. Passing through the nation's water, we have our first challenge, so it's over to Games Master. My first challenge of the show is on the charming Super Nintendo platform romp, The Smurfs. Playing as an adorable blue pixie, Players must use their bombs to clear their way to the end of the level before they're engulfed in the rising pool of lava. As usual, the player who finishes in the fastest time wins the joystick. So please welcome our first challengers, Lee, Lewis Marie and David Shomney. <laughs> Lee, we'll start with you. Before the show, we said to you, who's your favourite babe? And you said Emma. Now, who, who is Emma? It's just someone I know, and I ain't seen her. Nothing, it's just someone I know. You're not seeing her? She's not a girlfriend or that? No, she is. She ain't? Oh, she is yeah, a girlfriend? Yeah, she is. Like your 12 year old girlfriend. Shut up! That was, no, that was, that was a lie. That was a lie. Forget about that. That was an accident. He was that was an with accident. His 12 year old that was girl. an accident. Accident. She's back that tall. That was an accident. No, that ain't fair. That ain't fair. I don't think we need to do the challenge. I think we should just time you guys arguing. He said, What? It was in the dark. How should I know? <laughs> All right, well, I think you can go first in as you've got the younger girlfriend. And uh, Lee, if you'd like, like to hang around the back, we'll take a look at this week's news. You've had the Duff Toys, the Art House videos, and the Tragic Cartridge games, but now we've got Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the Mega CD. It's a play along an episode type situation. When the spandex clad heroes pull off their unfeasibly impressive moves, you must press the corresponding buttons prompted on the screen. Miss too many times, and you're allowed to stop playing. There's about three minutes of nine different episodes, including disputable classics like Day of the Dumpster, Food Fight and Foul Play in the Sky. Sounds like Arsenal. The game is released in January and Sega will be hoping that young fools everywhere will still be lapping this up and it might be a case of Mighty Morphin Passe Rangers. And that's a play on words. Launched into arcades last week was what will be one of the biggest games of next year, Killer Instinct. From the people who brought you Donkey Kong Country, it's the second game for Nintendo's new arcade system, the Ultra 64, and it'll be hoping to give Virtua Fighters 2 a kicking for the first part of next year. Then, when autumn leaves drift by the window, Killer Instincts will be one of the launch games for the Ultra 64 home system, which Jimmy Nintendo claims will cost less than 200 notes. Jimmy Hill. And why have all the characters got such small t-shirts on? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's a thick American bloke. What was it? What was it? What was it? Fortunately, he has a Timex Datalink watch that's saving that's the lives of parachutists all across America. It's a personal organizer on your wrist that reminds you of appointments, birthdays, telephone numbers, that kind of thing. This watch is saying, hello American bloke, your clothes are duff. The watch comes with database software for your PC. Simply select what info you want to download from your personal records, set your watch to the right mode, click, and the info is downloaded. Sensors on the watch read the flashing bars. A beep signifies it's all sent. The watch stores up to 10 entries. Millions of American men claim the watch has even saved their marriages. Awesome, thank you. You know, for the first time, I didn't forget my wedding anniversary or my daughter's birthday or to pick up my son after Little League practice on Tuesdays. <laughs> Get. Right, smurfing along with me on this challenge is Simon Byron from The One. Welcome, Simon. Hi, Dominic. Simon, uh, what type of smurf would you like to see? 
Um, I've always thought the Smurfs are too cute, so one which you pull its head off, I think, would be a... a headless Smurf? Yes. I, mean, I always want to see a Salmon Rushdie Smurf, <laughs> except I suppose you, you wouldn't really see it, would you, yeah. very often. Um, any, can you give our challengers any tips for this, Simon? Yeah, it's a pretty difficult challenge, I think, with the, with the lava constantly following them all the time. They've got to make good use of their bombs. They've got an infinite supply, so just a case of working out which way to go and uh, hoping for the best, I think. OK, best of luck to both our challengers. David's going first. Whoever gets to the, the exit at the top in the quickest time will get the joystick. Best of luck. Your time starts now. Yeah. OK, off goes David. He's got this little press in his hand. That's actually a bomb sound. What can he do with that? That's right. He's got to use it to destroy these boulders so that he can make his way through. But what he's got to be careful of is that the, not to be caught by the explosion because they actually damage him. OK, then. He's just not on the screen. He's got right, right, 15 right. seconds. He's not doing badly, Simon. No. make it to the exit. Time is irrelevant now. Best of luck. Off you go. Okay, off goes Lee. He's got the bomb in the present. That's quite a bad present, actually, isn't it? The bomb in it. It's some of the worst presents you've ever had, Simon. Um, I once got one of those uh, dodgy Playmobil figures off my auntie for Christmas. Oh, yeah. And I pulled my eyes out all day. I used to have an auntie who used to give me Bina Line and was four years out of the day. That's <laughs> right, I'm using the second hand shot. Back, back at the challenge. Please do an exit and show this before for 22 That's seconds. No problem so far. Some more collapsible platforms here, Simon. Yeah, he's made a good time. He can afford it to slip to slip up here. 31 seconds gone. He's doing well. Everything's collapsing here. Everywhere. Yeah, he's going to take a hit here. But that's How many okay. hits can he take? He's three in total, so he's got two left. And that's it. He's done that's it. it. He's done it. Excellent. Bad luck, David. Congratulations, Lee. Uh, we'll start with you first of all, David. Uh, you were going all right there. Then when, what went wrong? What caught you out there? I don't know. I don't know. You just, just went. I just, no, just shut up. I'll beat you up. I'll beat you up afterwards. Beat me up with yes, what? Yes, I will. It's rubbish. Could you beat each other up? Could you beat each other up now? Get off! That was a bit pathetic, wasn't it? He's not going to be very scared of you now. Well, listen, bad luck, David. Uh, come on now, boys. OK, I'll give you 50 lines each. Boys, right, listen, we've got to you, Lee. Um, was that any problem at all for you? No. Were you frightened at all? No, because I was playing it through the practice. Kick going through. So I knew I was going to win, especially some idiot like him. <laughs> and, and Lee, uh, a, a, final, a final message to Emma? Nothing, really. Um, just keep off my doorstep when you come <laughs> in. <laughs> <laughs> the golden joystick the head that goes to Lovelorn Lee. Yeah. Another round of applause there for Lee and David. <laughs> so as a nation rises in unison to acclaim Lee's effort, well apart from Emma that is, we'll take a look at this week's reviews. <laughs> First up, it's Rye Star. He's a star and he has a wry sense of humour, apparently. Part of the Sonic team were involved in the development of this game and it really shows. It looks very similar to Sonic. It also plays a lot like Sonic, which is a bit disappointing. We were really expecting something new. Basically, he's got these long arms that reach out and grab you and headbutt you like that. He doesn't move as fast as what Sonic actually did. Uh, this isn't a bad thing. It's small. It gives you more time to actually go around and explore. You have to ask yourself, do I want another platform game? If you do, it's not a bad choice, but personally, I think Dynamite Heady might be a better one to go for. Next up, Mr. Sega has furnished his spanky new 32X with a 2,000-year-old arcade game, Afterburner. It's not often people complain about arcade perfect conversions, and um, Afterburner is arcade perfect. It looks exactly like the original arcade game. However, the original arcade game had a giant hydraulic cabinet and was more of a fairground ride than a video game. You can't really do much. Uh, it's very limited gameplay. Um, you can do barrel rolls and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, I'd rather have a more complicated and uh, strategic shoot -em up than Afterburner on my 32X. Why are they bringing out uh, Afterburner and, and another game, Space Harrier? Uh, these are old arcade games. And, OK, they were immediately fun in their heyday, but now they, they, they've just got nothing.
finally, another game conversion of a stupidly titled kids TV show, Biker Mice from Mars. It does look extremely smart. It's a nice view, nice perspective, lots of nice colours, and it whizzes along at a fair old pace. Biker Mice is basically, you know, rock and roll racing. It looks the same, it plays the same. Um, there are a couple of differences, though. You can just basically freeze your opponents, drive past them, go into the lead, or cause an earthquake which slows them down loads and you're not affected. It can get tedious after a while, but the two-player mod adds to the fun. It's nice, but it's not amazing. People who like to do their own reviews can try their hand at the latest game line game, Lion King. To download a demo of this PC game, connect your modem to 081 558 8937. Apart from the cost of the call to London, the service is free, but remember to get permission from the bloke who pays the bills. As if we didn't already spend enough time gazing vacantly at our TVs, technology is on the way that'll turn the average family of the future into hopeless addicts. Good morning. Morning, Justin. Morning, Dad. Hey, I thought we said no video games before school. Dad, I'm downloading something from the Library of Congress. Don't lie, Yankee oh. kid. Hey, Justin, would you check on the status of United Flight 111 for me? And while you're at it, check the weather in Miami? Do it yourself, Hello. Bart. Yes, interactive TV is on the way. An emerging technology that'll transform our TVs from passive consumer durables churning out sitcoms into indispensable gateways to that much-touted high-tech nirvana, the information superhighway. A number of systems are testing now. Some of them even have their own virtually fit assistant to guide you through the mayhem. Please identify yourself. Oracle is one of the flashier systems being developed in the States. Hello, Larry. You look great today. You have four messages and you have three reminders. Your customized news has been updated in the last hour. ABC, CBS, CNN, personalized, or choose more. Choice is what it's all about. No longer enslaved by the TV schedule, any movie that takes your fancy will be on your screen in seconds. You have selected action movies. Please choose from star, director, decade, or ratings. Fearing punters might be so enamored with the new interactive TVs they forgot to eat, designers have thoughtfully ensured nutritional sustenance is a button away. Hi, this is Bruce from Michi's Pizza. First, you need to select a pizza size. Okay. Pizza sniffers can even shop from their seat. In department stores, you have a choice of Macy's, Saks Fifth Avenue, Emporium, Neiman Marcus, or select more. With every whim from a Chinese takeaway to an impromptu business meeting instantly indulged, the computing power required by interactive TV systems is formidable. BT are testing a system which uses relatively modern phone lines, but if widespread interactive TV proves impossible without new cable, it'll still take years to lay the thousands of miles required. However, if the arrival time of these new TV systems is uncertain, there's no doubt that by the turn of the century, the interactive TV will be the most powerful info and entertainment tool we possess. Our social life will crumble, we will end up with no mates, but we will have our all singing, all dancing, interactive telly. Tonight's special guests are taking a final sip of herbal tea in preparation for their challenge. So let's go over to Games Master to find out what they'll be playing. I hope my contestants' fingers are feeling nimble, because my next challenge is on the arcade button basher, Newman Athletics. Players must compete in three events. The frantic 100 meter dash, the strenuous train push, and the rigorous rock breaking race. Whoever wins two of these exhausting events will take the golden joystick. So please welcome the greatest quarter miler in British track history and the young man set to carry on that baton, Roger Black and Dwayne Ledejo. Season just now. What yeah. sort of things do you get up to? 
Not a lot. Plenty of relaxation, plenty of junk food, just enjoying ourselves, you know, well-earned rest. Yeah. And I suppose this last season, I mean, for you, it was relatively injury-free for a change. It was very injury-free. It was a good one, very pleased, but uh, this guy had a slightly better one. You certainly did. It was um, a dream season for you, Dwayne, yeah? It was indeed. Um, I couldn't have asked for anything better. Yeah, and what, what are your hopes then for the future, Dwayne? Well, get myself ready for next year, for the World Championships and um, obviously the Olympic Games. Now, finally, uh, I know this is actually a little bit embarrassing, but when Linford and Colin won, I did get them to wave to my mum, who is the biggest athletic fan in the world. Great. If you don't mind, guys, just giving it a quick little wave to my mum, Paula. Hello, Paula. Hi. That is brilliant. OK, while I get ready for the biggest birthday present of my life, we'll take a quick break. As guests on today's show, Britain's two greatest 400 metre runners, Roger Black and Dwayne Ledejo. They're about to play at Newman Athletics. Helping me out at trackside is Amiga Action's Brad Burton. Welcome, Brad. Hi, Mum. Now, Brad, any tips for Roger and Dwayne? Well, what they're going to have to do here, Dominic, is get the rhythm right. When it comes down to tapping the buttons, right, they've got to tap the speed up and then they've got to press the other button to do whatever the action is be it jumping or be it stopping the train. You'll see that. It'll all, it, 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 it. Yes, we'll get it in the end. OK, so we're looking for a couple of pairs of strong wrists here. Best of luck, it's uh, we've got three. Uh, semi-athletic disciplines. Whoever wins two of them will get the golden joystick. Let's go to the first event. Okay, so here we go. Dwayne is player one. That's the blonde hair guy in the foreground. Roger's player two. The purple hair guy in the background. And they're off, and it's Roger taking the lead. Dwayne's trying to come out, but Roger starts explosive. Roger Black's tearing down the river. They just have to come up now, though. Oh, here comes Dwayne the day to his leg. The last one for the line. Oh, my word. Roger Black that just gets it 10.3 seconds. Two hundredths of a second ahead. Dwayne, he goes one up. Brad, I'm out of breath now. Talk us through that race. My word. What can I say? You see the speed then? These the, the guys are fire coming out of the boots. <laughs> Amazing. But um, the thing is, what's happened here, they've been bitten by a radioactive lymphoid crystal. I think that was what the, uh, where they got the power from there. <laughs> OK, now we go to event number two. And this is the train push. So Dwayne begins first. Now, what's going to happen here, Brad? Check this one out. You've got three buttons, of which two of them are used to power, the other one's used to stop the train. Watch it. Press the button, and now tap. Push okay, it back. stop the train. Push now it's tap it. Boom. And back goes the train. Let's see the distance. It's going up, up. It's uh, 45 metres, 74 for Dwayne. He's not qualified there, though, Dominic. He needs 55 metres on the head. 55 metres plus. OK, now we have Roger going. Over it. OK, here goes and Roger. is 54 centimetres, that means by just over a metre, Dwayne Ledejo has drawn it level, it's one event all. Now we go to the final event, what have we got coming up Brad? It's the, the block smash. That's right mate, the thing is with this one, anyone who's played Mortal Kombat knows exactly what this is about, you power up, you get your energy together and boom, you smash the block. Okay, both Dwayne and Roger have 25 seconds to smash as many blocks as they can, whoever smashes the most will get the joystick. Off we go, three, two, one. Let's go, fellas. Off they go. Okay, Roger is the blue with the purple hair on the right. Dwayne's got the blonde hair on the left. We can see the counter. Dwayne is ahead, actually. Dwayne is just one block ahead. My word. Check out Dwayne. He's got some power. Dwayne is going for it. We've got 10 seconds left. Roger's falling two behind now. Oh, it's but Dwayne, oh, Dwayne's hiding a bit now, but so is Roger. We've got five seconds left here. I think Dwayne's going to two, one. And that is the time. And just by two points, Dwayne. OK, now, Roger, you got a great start. Great start. Won the 100 metres. Mm -hmm. which was, that was the important one. Which was the only true athletics exactly. one in there. Exactly. But after that... Uh, he came through in the end, you know. It was, but it was very... All of them were very, very close, though. Very close. Dwayne. I mean, we practised before and they were close before then. Yeah. So he's and got faster fingers. And you, you finally did it on that, on that rock chopping. Well, that rock chopping, yes. Yeah, there's a little bit of karate in there. But no, no sprained fingers or that? We're not going to get... I think we're all no, right. No, no, yeah. I think we're all right. Sued for millions of dollars. Oh, my shoes outside. Check us out, Wayne. <laughs> well, listen, thanks very much for coming on, guys. I'd love Pleasure. to be able to give the joystick to both of you, but there can only be one on this show, and the Golden Joystick winner is Dwayne Ledejo. <laughs> to lighten the burdens of hapless folk everywhere in the consultation zone. Greetings. The flames are on. 
Welcome one and all to Cooking with Games Master. Who's first for a tender grilling? Games Master, I look up to you very much. I'd like you even more if you could help me out. Are there any secret tracks on street races on the SNES? Get ready to burn the rubber, as you young people say. Because, yes, there are a number of secret tracks giving even more of your money. On the options screen, put the cursor on Custom Cup. Then press L, R, L, R, X, Y. This will give you four extra tracks to exhaust yourself on. No, I always supply the best gear. Thanks very much. I'll treasure that always. More large, please. I've heard that you can get a super gun on Death Mask on the Amiga. How interesting. I suppose you want to know where to find it. On the prison level, after collecting the key, open the door at the end of the first corridor. Destroy the robot that rocks your way, and just over to the right, you will notice two skulls on the floor. Push the wall between the skull to uncover a secret room filled with power-ups and a super big gun. This should put the frighteners up any would-be attackers. Cheers, Games Master. See you later. One more before I gobble the turkey. Games Master, are there any fatalities and bulls on the Mega Drive? No, but after defeating your opponent, try pressing A four times to see the winner's special after stomp move. Each character does something different, but all require a lot of balls. I hope I haven't shattered your illusions. OK, thanks, Games Master. I made a meal out of those vegetables. Now I'm off for a lie down. Later, dudes. Many blokes heralded the seventh guest as the future of video gaming when it was released over a year ago. It features spooky adventure shenanigans with gorgeous graphics, ahoy! Eleventh Hour, the sequel again takes place in a gorgeously rendered but pant-changingly scary house with its selection of iffy inhabitants. Every breath I take is influenced by that night. That house is not what it appears to be. How about a chop roast? A chop steak. The plot of Eleventh Hour, on the surface, is the story of Carl Denning, gone off to look for his lover and his producer, Rob Morales, who's gone to research an old haunted house. You're Carl Denning, you're the reporter, and as you play Eleventh Hour, it's more like being involved in a movie that you have control of. Help me, please, I can't get out. And as with Seventh Guest, impeding your path are crystal maze-type puzzles which must be conquered if you're to reach your damsel in distress. Oh dear, it's the Mad Bird again. <laughs> no live humans were actually harmed in the making of this. The producers have used the old film against the blue screen, then key the action onto a computer background routine. Never fails. I have a rule about people I work with. Oh. Yeah, I don't get involved. Go on, mate, she is very fit. really rises above uh, a lot of what's been done in the past. Uh, I think there's a lot of substance here, and that's what we've tried to accomplish. I think we have. Indeed, 11th Hour is likely to induce a spontaneous national outbreak of pant changing once more when it's released on PC soon. Crazy people, psychological terror, fear that goes beyond childish imagination into adult terror. Don't do it. We're finished there for today. I'm off to check that every school teacher has halitosis. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.